Today in our daily walk through Psalm, we are in Psalms 132, and this is probably a song written by Solomon, and it mentions his father, David, and what it talks about, of course, and then it's a song of ascent. It's, it's, it's a song that they used as they're, you know, the pilgrims are coming back to Jerusalem for a festival, just as we have been talking about the last few days. Um, but Solomon wrote this about really his father and about the, the desire to want to build the tabernacle for the Lord. And of course, we know that the Lord does not need a house to live in, first of all. It, the Lord has said this before. Uh, the reality is he inhabits the entire universe. Uh, his habitation is literally outside of time or space. So who could build a, a church building or a synagogue or a house to house God? I mean, he, he's everywhere. And you can't confine him to a tent or a tabernacle. Now, certainly God prescribed for Israel in the early days, at the time of Moses, as they were coming in on the Exodus, to have a tabernacle, to a tent of meeting, if you will, place a reference point or a place to where Moses could meet with the Lord. And that was all prescribed in the law. And they had done that for much of the time going through the Exodus and uh, on into the promised land. And then, of course, but when we come to David's time, uh, they would even have the tabernacle there up in Jerusalem. And it was just a tent. And you can see how that was all put together if you look at the Old Testament. Uh, but David wanted to build something a little bit more formidable. He wanted to build something that was more elaborate and was certainly worthy of our Lord. But, of course, you think about that. Well, what could we possibly build that would be ever worthy of our Lord? And, and the answer is nothing. And yet he's, he's willing and desires to tabernacle or to meet with his people and he does that and he did that through the tabernacle and but the problem was when David wanted to do that Nathan the prophet had to come to him with the word of the Lord and say David it's great that you have the heart and desire to build a tabernacle or a place for the Lord but you can't do it because your hands are bloody and I, I, I like that because if you think about it, you might have a desire to build or do something for the Lord. And the reality is our hands are too bloody for that. We have too much sin on our hands to even build anything or accomplish anything for the Lord. However, that tabernacle, which David couldn't build later on. You know, God, of course, speaking through Nathan, said that your son will build a tabernacle and the seed will establish the throne in that tabernacle forever. And of course, through Solomon and through that seed, of course, would Messiah would come and Messiah himself would establish that tabernacle, that eternal tabernacle and that throne and that's what it's all pointing to. What a joy it is, because in reality today, when we wonder uh, where is that tabernacle, of course, Solomon did build a tabernacle, and it lasted uh, up until the, the time of the Babylonian captivity, and of course, everything was wiped out at that point. Uh, Nehemiah and Ezra had come, from being in captivity for 70 years with the Babylonians. They had come and rebuilt the city and the tabernacle. And of course, you know, years later, it would be rebuilt by Herod the Great. But when Jesus, you know, and Herod the Great during the time of Jesus, Jesus was there, saw that great and beautiful temple, and, and of course told you know, you see this great temple, but not one stone shall be laid upon the other, he said to his disciples. And certainly prophecy, because 30 years later, um, Titus Vespasian would come in and he would utterly destroy, actually 40 years later, he would destroy 
the uh, the temple and in, in down, right down to not one stone standing on one another. And today we look at it and there is no temple. Where, where do we go? Where is the place of meeting? Well, we know that Jesus had established a brand new tent of meeting and that is in the heart of every believer. You believe on Jesus Christ and you receive him you, you then become the children of God, and he now dwells in us by his spirit. And that is what we have today. So where is the tent of meeting? Well, it's well, it's whenever two or more are gathered in his name, he's in their midst. And of course, he's also in us. And that's why Paul was so animated about, uh, don't you know that, the, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Uh, whom you have from God and you are not your own. Of course, he was saying that in light of, of pagan practices and fornication, idolatry, you know, keep yourself separate from the world because you are the temple of God. You, the, the Holy Spirit's in you. And, and I love that. He says, he says, you have this from God. This is a gift of God and you don't belong to yourself anymore. You're no longer of God. You're no longer belong to yourself, but you belong to God. And so we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's the place of meeting. And of course, uh, our job is to keep ourselves holy unto him. And that's what all repentance is, is turning every moment, every time that we find ourselves on the wrong track or a track away from the Lord, or that we have allowed something to come in between us and the Lord, we're to, we're to turn from that. We're, we're to reject that. Uh, submitting ourselves to God, re, you know, rejecting the devil, and he will flee from us, drawing nigh unto the Lord, and he will draw nigh unto us. Because, why? Because there is such a precious thing that God has done within us. And he made it all possible through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus, the, the, the whole work of, of sacrificing lambs uh, for the sin offering, uh, you know, that was simply a covering in the Old Testament in the tabernacle, but now we are the tabernacle. <laughs> it's our lives, our, our lives individually and corporately as a church, our lives are the tabernacle. And, and Jesus paid for all of our sins to, so that we could have that, that clean and pure, holy walk with him. And so, of course, we have to main, we, 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 we maintain that. Actually, he maintains that, but we maintain that when the Holy Spirit convicts us when we are, you know, sinning or convicted of, of going off track or whatever. And we, we, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And to maintain that relationship, because that's what it's all about. It's something that God did. He came down from heaven and became the sacrifice so that we could have fellowship with him for all eternity. And, and that's really the whole uh, point of the tabernacle. Now, David wanted to build that tabernacle. We see again in Psalm 132, uh, Lord, remember David and his afflictions. And, and of course, I believe it was probably Solomon that wrote this, how he swore, speaking of David, unto the Lord and vowed unto the mighty God of Jacob, surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, uh, nor go unto my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes nor slumber to my eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. And you see the heart of David in that, wanting to build that tabernacle, a place of meeting for the Lord, a place where the Lord could reside. And of course, you know, what could any of us build for the Lord for him to reside in? He's done the work. We can't, we can't do the work. He's done and the work is finished. And now we get to enjoy having the Holy Spirit, having the presence of the Lord in each of our lives, each and every day. And, you know, we, we want to be um, submissive to the Spirit as he leads us. We want to be reading the Word, studying the Word so that we know uh, that we can, we, we know what is of the Spirit, uh, because nothing that the Lord would say by his Holy Spirit is going to contradict anything he said in the Word. And that's the wonderful thing. We have the Holy Word, and we have the Holy Spirit. We have the very presence of God in those things. And, and what a joy it is to walk with the Lord in fellowship, 
and knowing that the work is finished from the foundations of the world because he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and I. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today, right now, and you shall be saved. And turn from your, your ways and turn unto his ways. Let him save you, and he will save you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. <laughs>